to the CLS show. I'm Marty Gallagher here with Scott Splitstozer, driver of the number two Midwest Modified. Always usually sure. find you at uh, the legendary Cedar Lake Speedway. Uh, yes. Another great season again last year. Obviously, as the seasons have come along and we've talked about earlier, you're kind of, you're a veteran, but maybe not as veteran as some may think. You started right. uh, racing a little bit later in your life. Right, yeah, I didn't, my, my dad raced when I was a kid. And I always wanted to race, but it, I mean, racing's expensive. So, I, and I just never thought I wasn't a real mechanical. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't think I was mechanical. So, I wait. I waited a long time, and uh, I knew if I raced, I knew I better. I seen buddy. I seen friends go bankrupt. So yeah. I was like, I was like, man, I I, I don't want to do that. So like, I bought a I bought a hauler first, and I bought a trailer, paid for it, and then. And then bought a car, and then I and, and and I didn't start till I was 35. My dad raced the whole time when I was a kid, and then he quit in like '81. Okay, so I, I always wanted to. Yeah. I raced four wheelers, kind of traveled around, did that, raced ATVs all over, and was that and, uh, flat track or off? Like I know both. both. Okay. I did. I actually started on ice okay. with studs, and uh, then I then I uh, did a little bit of TT and some dirt oval stuff. Which I, you know, got me close to the racing, yeah. the car racing, yeah. and then, uh, and then after that, I, I actually entered District Twenty Three, and I had never motocross before. Oh, wow. but part of it was motocross, a TT, and then oval. Okay. And so I would change my bike in between nights and mm -hmm. and get it ready, and and I did that for I did that off and on with the ice racing for probably about eight years. Oh wow. And did that by myself, traveled all over. Yeah, it was mostly obviously like you said, all over. So yep. Wisconsin, Minnesota, yep. Dakotas, Michigan maybe. And that what what I I did that, I got I kinda got to the top of the level that I could get at and I I led District twenty three for the whole year wow. and broke my collarbone. Oh. With only a few races to go and I lost like the national the twenty <laughs> district twenty three points by like six points. Because I wasn't able to show up to a no. to a double weekend. So. so when you transition over now to your obviously four wheels, right? Yep. Um, the dirt, full body, stock car, modified. What yep. was your first class that you ran? A mod. A mod. So yep. you went straight to the top. Straight to straight <laughs> to an A. Yeah. Straight to an A mod. A mods. Yeah. And I, I and you've been around the cars. It's not like I, I was a totally I have. like I had been around the I've been around the cars, grew up around watching my dad, but I just wasn't mechanical. I watched him race all the time, but I really didn't know I was just I was a quiet kid and I just watched and mm -hmm. my, my dad, the history of my dad racing was, I mean, my dad raced for Dave Jones, okay. Dave Jones, Jones chassis. He built a, he built a car when he was 15 years old. Dave did his first chassis, the first car he ever built. And, uh, he built that car and asked my dad to drive it. My dad had been dry, racing, I believe hobby stocks at Cedar Lake. He started in 69 and, uh, so my dad drove for Dave Jones the first night out and he swept with Dave's car and wow. Dave was 15 years old. I have an article about Dave Jones from uh, from Oakdale. Okay. He built, built his first car at 15 and skipped split skills or sweeps with it the first night. Wow. And there's an article with a, just a tape number seven on it. And that was kind of the, that's the Jones, that's where Jones chassis and Ron Jones. Uh, my dad literally raced for them for several years with Jack Harder racing for Ron Jones Sr and my dad racing for Dave Jones at the same time, and they would battle each other every night. And my dad literally got done and then handed the car to Ron oh, Jones, and that's where John Jones' career started. From. So, I mean, I've been around some people. My, I grew up going up to the farm, and I saw, I watched Brad race, Brad Peterson race, when I, w I wanted to do that. I mean, I watched him race quarter midgets. He, he didn't even know who I was at the time, yeah. but I watched him race quarter midgets, and I was like, oh, this is so cool and I'd go see him places and a friend of my dad would take us and and uh, and then later then I ended up playing hockey when we ended up both at Stillwater and oh cool we, so, so I guess where I grew up. the backgrounds yep that's right very yeah. lengthy yes uh, so when you obviously hopped in the A-Bod what uh, what was your expectations you just wanted to try to get the feel of the car or did you want to hey I'm gonna really do good and win at this thing, or no? I just started. I, turn I started. I started out in a uh, car I got from Ray Baroli, who used to sponsor Cedar Lake RGR Motorsports, and uh, Joey had driven the car, and it was an old Jones stock chassis. And Joey would be Jensen. Joey Ray Jensen. Jensen. Joey Jensen had driven the car, correct? And uh, so I got that car. And I think I paid 
two thousand dollars for it and it came minus a motor but like three transmissions yeah. three sets of headers like five sets of gears and <laughs> it, it was like it was but it was a it was an old used car and i, I just I, my dad never really thought that i would race or what's going to be good enough to race and I, and I just don't think he ever saw that and he didn't watch me four-wheel race a lot so he didn't see me win a lot there so mm -hmm. so he just he just kind of held back for the longest yeah. time and i finally finally he knew i had bought this car and it was sitting up at a friend's house and he, and he goes let's go look at that car <laughs> and i'm like oh <laughs> I'm a, so, so we went up there we looked at it and he says you bring that to my house Nice. And let's 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 see what you can do. So awesome! How did uh, the first couple of years go? I know, like obviously you're in a Midwest modified now, but you ran an A mod to yep. start out with. From 2002 to 2017, I ran A mod, and uh, I I I loved it. I mean, I, I I bet I wasn't a night into doing it, and I was. I mean, I was hooked. Yeah. I, mean, I I got rid of everything I owned. It was like <laughs> like this is what I'm gonna do. Yeah. You know, and I had I had I mean I I I had saved up a lot of money, so I knew, you know, I yeah. mean I, I don't think I made it six weeks into the season and I went and bought another car. Wow. <laughs> and uh, I, I, but I, but I literally like I was my my uncles are the friends uh -huh. and they were racing. J, uh, Ricky was racing for Baroli with Joey Jensen, mm -hmm. so I'd run around with them and pit on their cars and uh, and uh, so I I I, I mean it just in your butt you're you, there yes. no matter what yeah. like yep. and now you're obviously get to be behind the wheel right what uh, what's your first like maybe your I'd say your first win you remember you sure you remember it like yesterday yes and it was at Cedar Lake like the place. That was my, I mean, if ever I would win, that would be the place that, if I, I, I told myself, if I win one feature here, I'll quit. I mean, I, in, my, <laughs> in, my head, in, my, in my head, that was, I mean, yeah. that for me, that was, I watched my dad race there from when I was two. Yeah. And I mean, I've been going there my whole life. And that, I mean, I, I've watched every great racer that's raced at Cedar Lake for my, for my whole life. For me to, for me to pull out on the track and race with Ron Jones, Craig Thatcher, the proc now is Harlstead. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could name names that I, Daryl Nelson was there and Utenans and, and I mean, Utenan and Urinine and, yeah. and I mean, there was guys, I could name guys and they were my, all my idols. And yeah. they're probably some of them were younger than I was, yeah. but I, but they were, they were the guys. Mm -hmm. So in 06, uh, they switched to the Goodyear deal and the NASCAR deal and I, I bought a new Shaw car that year and my dad was not happy about it. He was all upset. He's like, got another new race. You're going to buy a new race car. And we already have this one that works. We had a J car at the time. And that kind of did get me going. The J car actually got me running up front. I didn't win with it. But I think we made it one month into the season. And I won with, it was at the beginning of the year. And all the good, Kane was there. My idol, Thatcher. I mean, Joey, every, Daryl. You know, yeah, all the guys from up north, SD, LA, everybody was there. Yeah. And and uh, there was nine restarts. <laughs> and I remember them. And I was I was I was screaming at myself in my helmet. I mean, I was about deaf because I was screaming, "You screw this up, you idiot! Don't screw that! You better drive this thing!" And I mean, every restart, I just bail it in there and yeah. just, you know. And it, uh, yeah, so that was my first one. That was That's in all awesome. six, and it was yeah, I'll never forget it. That's it was, perfect. It was phenomenal. So you make the transition to Midwest Modifieds. You said a little bit later on. What was yep. the decision there? Obviously, I mean, Avod's pretty expensive class. Midwest Mods yeah, can be expensive sure. too. Right. But uh, or was there a time where you ran both cars? I did. Okay, I did. That's what I actually ran the street stop. Street stop. My, okay. my father-in-law is an engineer for 3M, and he uh, partway a couple years in. He just got interested in the racing thing. Okay. He started coming every weekend. And he goes, you know, I'm going to buy a welder, and I'm going to build my own car. <laughs> and originally, he was going to have my wife drive it. Okay. And my wife was just like, my wife Robin, she was like, she she would think about it, but I think as it got built, she was like, I don't know. She's very mild-mannered, very cautious. She's, you know, very methodical, a real thinker, intellectual. And so... She, the longer it went on, she kind of just looked at it and was like, no, nah, no, no. So then I ended up getting in the street stock and, and we drove that. And uh, 
we had a blast. I totaled it out at the 100, like oh. a few years in, mm -hmm. and I had had another car that I had bought from Dan Ostrander through Dan Wheeler. Okay. And and it was just a spare chassis. And Dan told me not to pass up on it. He's like, this thing barely has any races on it. Buy it. And so that was sitting in my father-in-law's nice. barn, which was a perfect place for it to sit. Because <laughs> he, because he just he he called me one day and he goes, you know, we don't have a streeter anymore. He's like. Maybe I maybe I put this B mod together. Okay. And, and so that's how that that came. So I, I still have that car. It's still yeah. sitting in the barn. Brought we bring it out every great once in a while because awesome. he likes to see it go. So it's very and we've done what the first time we ever brought it out, we brought it out at the one hundred. Okay. And uh as a B mod, it had an X on it. Nobody knew who it was. <laughs> and and I I uh I passed a ton of people in it and it was like he built the motor in it, he built the <laughs> tranny in it, he built the gears in it. He had never been racing before. And I drove the thing to the front. The, and in the feature, I, I, I spun out Hool, oh. Steve Hool, who, was, who went, went on to win the race. Was, I spun him out, trying to pass him. He let off and I hit him. So I went to the back and I drove it back up to fourth wow. by the end of the race. And then we were, and then my father-in-law was completely hooked in no, I on, the, imagine. on the racing, so. Wow. So then we did both. Perfect. What, uh, so you ran last weekend down in Humboldt, Kansas. Yep. And that was your first time down there, right? Correct. And call it, what, is that the Hummer, right? Yep, the, the Hummer. Hummer. Yep. Yep. And it's uh, USMTS, USRA, the yep. odds. Yep. And cool. uh, how did the weekend experience go down there? Um, it, it was fun. Uh, I, I've been battling cancer for this last year, which yeah. has been just unbelievable for me. It's changed a lot of perspective. No, you and look great, though. Thanks. You still look great every Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but uh, so so we we kind of just sat around all winter. Didn't mm -hmm. do a lot. I did three surgeries and twelve treatments, wow. and it was it was a rough winter. I I didn't I did. I thought about racing, kind of keeps me going, but, mm -hmm. but, uh, and we talked about it. Jim Weeks pits for me, he used to pit for Brent Larson, who's now a world outlaw guy. He pitted for him for like 12, 13 years, and Jimmy's become a really good friend, so he, he gets me out of the house a lot. Awesome. So we buy guns and we buy car stuff and just travel around. And yeah. John Evenson, who owns my car now, like a best buddy to me, mm -hmm. and he, you know, they, they constantly call me and keep me up and we'll run up and look at the car and just hang out and, and, uh, so it was getting closer to Humboldt, and we kind of started joking. It was literally a joke. John just put on a text one night. He's like, hey, we should go to Humboldt. And Jimmy goes, yes. <laughs> and Jimmy's usually the one that doesn't like to travel as much. Uh -huh. and, and so when Jimmy said yes, I'm like, well, I want to go. <laughs> you know, I'm a race car driver. I want to, if we're racing, I want to race, you know. So then we, we ended up, we did ended up just like Dave King called me today, and he goes, well, I didn't know you guys were going to Humboldt. I could have told you some stuff and helped yeah. you out, you know. And I'm like, well, I, I didn't know I was going either, Dave. But uh, so the, so those guys, we, we did literally last minute, stripped yeah. the car down, put it back together, ran up there on the weekends because John lives in Zimmerman, and obviously I live in Cottage Grove, and yeah. Jimmy's like 10 minutes from me. So we, Jimmy and I meet and drive up there mm -hmm. and work on it. So we threw it together and, and uh, put valve springs in it and, and uh, re-lubed everything, took everything apart, put it back together, and we just took off awesome. and, and went down there. It came to, Andy Jones got me graphics like that literally, literally two days before, and I stuck them on and fit me in and got those. And, and so did you guys leave on a Thursday or did Thursday's practice? So you guys went we Wednesday? went down. We went down Wednesday. I I had a doctor's appointment. Otherwise, we would have practiced. Okay. So, so I had to get a re Never been there before. Never. No, yeah, and you, you we wanted practice to, laps. They wanted me to practice. Oh, we wanted to practice, but uh, I told them I'm like my wife that she don't ever lay the well, ever. She tells me to do whatever, but she but she just said you need to go to this. So yeah. it was a it was a it was a um I had a, just had a surgery and they were kind of giving me all the info of what mm -hmm. they found and I was getting results. So she wanted she she wanted me there for that. Yeah. So I went to that. We literally left they were were at my house waiting for me to get home from the doctor <laughs> we jumped in the truck and we took off that was it and we Cold drove snow. as fast as we could to get down there and we literally got down there as practice was ending okay so we, we then we just followed wheeler to the hotel I, we stopped got out looked at the track mm -hmm. so we knew what it looked like yeah and, i can't uh, remember it's a pretty small track correct a quarter yeah. mile or a little bit bigger than a quarter mile they one 
pamphlet said quarter and the other said three eighths. So we we weren't sure what we were getting into. Tony Barr texted me and said, "Put your Ashland set up in." So we kind of knew we had some gears with that would work, yeah. you know, and and uh, and that's that's kind of what we want. That's what we went with. And yep. then Friday he raced obviously Friday Saturday. So Friday was kind of heat race qualifying and stuff like that. How yep. that go? Um, actually Thursday, oh, so. and then it rained out Friday. Okay. So that's... so we raced Thursday. And I don't want to correct you, but that, no, we that's... did. We raced Thursday and sat around all day Friday. Okay. So Thursday Thursday we we. Uh, we we were a, we were a little off. If we would have listened to Tony Barr, we'd have been right on. But we thought the crack. When we got there, we talked to USMTS guys, mm -hmm. and they were they were like, "This thing is going to be rough, and it's going to be super fast." And I'm thinking, I literally went back and took a Tylenol, mm -hmm. which I never do. But I'm like, I'm going to be sore. I mean, yeah. I'm 56 now, so like running through holes isn't my favorite thing to do anymore. I don't I don't like hammering holes, but it was bad. I guess Wednesday practice was just rough and it all peeled up and everybody was ran two three sessions and they were off the track because it was so bad so i was thinking it was bad so i freed the car up mm -hmm. and uh and we were there we were we were right on the edge of getting in mm -hmm. and we but we didn't make it in we were we lost one spot in the heat race started in the b and i think we finished like one spot out of making okay. it in the show so we were but we felt good we felt like well we never been here we never ran here we didn't know what to expect and yep. those guys were Sometimes they're very competitive, so it feels the, I feel the pressure, but yeah. at the same point, they're like, Scott, you ain't been here. Just get out there and run. We know you'll do what you can with the car. Yeah. So. Obviously, you've had many laps at plenty of other different tracks. Correct. You see the like, Speedway. And right. Fast forward to now, Friday, or Saturday, Friday, you said it rained out. Yep. And it sounded like you had a pretty good day. Saturday was, yeah, it was it was good. It was good. We, uh, we, we started out, we, I don't know, I can't remember what we drew, but they do a redraw mm -hmm. for number one. So we ended up like, uh, we were third row out, so we were sixth. And uh, we ended up winning it. I I was fortunate, and I, I mean, there was fast cars there. I, we were surprised. We felt like we brought 65, in 64 cars, 64 cars. 64 cars. I mean, Chris Jackson, USRA guys from all over. There's people from Canada, yeah. I'm mean, Texas. I saw. I mean, there was there was good guys. It was intimidating, actually. Even like we know we're decent around here, but like yeah, there sure. was there was good guys. So we we uh, I got to the bottom and I found something right away. Mm -hmm. And we had changed gears. We started out when we pulled in. We were on a 618. Mm -hmm. We went to a 632. Ended up on. We borrowed a 644 from Dan Wheeler. Okay. And man, that was it. Gave me. I didn't. Ha I don't feel like I had the motor with them. Mm -hmm. With that gear, I had enough to get off the corner good. So when I found the bottom, I could get off the corner. I had to be careful not to spin the wheels because I did have quite a gear. And but but yeah. we we got to the bottom and we. I knew I had something for the leader right away. I felt like I was like we were pretty good. Nice. And uh, we had our. We pretty much had our Ashland set up in like Tony told us <laughs> to do, true. and it it was good. <laughs> it was good. So. And then obviously you could feature time. Yep. And I, I made an adjustment. We put some lead on because we wanted to make weight. We were yeah. worried about we're like we're starting. We redrew through third, okay. and uh, so I was pretty, pretty freaking good. I was, I was excited about that. Yeah. But, uh, we were hoping to stay up in there, and I ran fifth for a long time, and they had a red flag, and the red flag did not help us. I don't think on the Hoosiers. I sealed up my tires. I think for probably. I bet it was six, seven laps. Okay. And so it, it hurt us. We lost four or five guys. I had been running consistently fifth for quite a while and we we're pretty good, but the car was, the weight I put on was hurting me. And every time I'd catch traction, it would push my front end out onto the black and it was black outside the traction on the bottom. So I'd have to gather the car back up as quick as I could, get it back and we had good forward, but it took us a minute to get it. So I, 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 I kind of teetered in there for a while and then I think I actually dropped back to maybe 13th, 14th. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, then I started hunkering down, really find, trying to find lines and I started picking up speed and then nice. we moved back up into the top 10 and we finished 10th. And we were we were we were happy. Yeah. Those guys were like, man, we did not expect to do this well coming here yeah. for our first time. And you know. yeah, but you got experience. So you mentioned Ashland. You went to Ashland last year after Cedar Lake Speedway's season ended up, and you did well up at that track too. We did. We did. We won. We won our heat up there. And uh, I've always loved that track, but we don't get up there very much. Mm -hmm. It's four hours from us. And and uh, but Dave, John and I started going up there maybe our second year in racing together, which is a couple of years ago. And uh, 
we we just started doing decent up there. De- we weren't we weren't winning. We but we were we always move forward and we'd be in a we'd be in a top five six spot. So we decided to go to the red clay and uh, we won our heat and uh, we started back maybe six seventh eighth something okay. like that and moved up early and we were running pretty much sixth for a while and then I made a big <laughs> screw up and uh, got in too hot on the bottom and turned completely sideways. Almost lost it. Everybody said they were watching Jimmy and John. Had people that were watching them watch the race, and they said if you would have saw those guys, they like immediately were like screaming and oh no, oh no. And I, I ended up driving through the edge of the infield, never lifted. And because there was there was it had been rain, they had put up like a three foot like berm oh, in yeah. the inside. Well, I jumped the berm, Jesus. pulled my nose completely under the car and then jumped the other berm to get back out onto the track. Lost about three spots, but the yellow came out for something else. Mm -hmm. And I got freaking lucky. So they put me back to sixth, restarted sixth, and uh, I moved out in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then we just, we took off and and drove up and literally challenged for the lead at one point. We ended up in the best spot you could be up Mm -hmm. there, second place, where they had to put on a dress. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I'll tell you what, when the lady walked up to the side of my car, she walks up to me and she goes, you going to put the dress on? And, I, and I'm looking at her and I'm like, Jimmy is always like, wear that dress, you ain't wearing that dress, you know? And she she takes an envelope and goes like this to me. And I look inside the crack of the Good envelope cash. and it said 2200 bucks cash. And I looked at her and I said, I'll put on whatever you want me to put on. <laughs> like, y'all wear the dress. Yeah. So she's like, oh, great. She's like, that's great, you know? So, uh, so yeah, so I, I put the dress on and I think we took home 34, dollars $3,600, which the winner, Tony Barr, looks at me and he's like, should have let you go by. <laughs> he won 1500 bucks and I won 3400 bucks. So, that's I mean, great. it was worth it. It was, that's and that was, to, to be honest, that was one of the funnest races. I, yeah, I mean, it was that was that was a blast. Uh, circle back to like Speedway. So obviously, you've raced there many years, right? Yep. And you've gone other places. City Lake Speedway's got to have helped you to be successful all these other spots. Yeah. When I when I when I started racing, uh, Brent Larson. Uh, world Outlaw guy yep. who I I babysat when he was a kid. <laughs> my dad got his dad into racing. Oh, wow. My dad, my dad and his dad worked at Countryside Volkswagen together, and my dad got his dad into racing. And uh, and and uh, so so years later, Brent's of course already racing for yeah. years, you know. And I I would go watch him, and I would sign for him from the inside of Cedar Lake Speedway for Low Brent Larson in his in his super stock and. So I get to watch that kid for years, and and uh, then I also got to help him with his late model for a few years. His dad asked me at one point. Brent was struggling with other things and was was uh, doing the late model. And he's like, "Hey, do you think you could come and help Brent for a while?" And I'm like, "Brent knows way more than I do, but I'll come and help, yeah. you know, and just enjoy his company and go to the track with him." Yeah. Well, well. Uh, so that so that whole thing leads me to Brent. Brent said to me, he said, "You start racing, Scotty." He said, "Cedar Lake Speedway, number one, Menominee, number two. Mm-hmm. That will get you good on the slick, and it'll get you good at racing fast tracks like now." And he goes, "That's where the best competition is." Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I love Cedar Lake Speedway. I've been going there my whole entire life. I've been going there since I was two, and I'm 56. <laughs> so I went there with my dad all through his career, and then literally my uncles. My dad was their idol in the friends, and so my uncle Dave started racing, and I would go with those guys, and and I've helped a lot of people there through the years, just been a crew guy and and done that. But I mean, my my intention was Cedar Lake. Get to Cedar Lake. That's where I wanted to race. That was that was the place. I mean, anybody you talk to knows Cedar Lake. Yeah. Anywhere I've raced, I've went up to Canada and raced, and they literally come over to your car and go, "You race at Cedar Lake. What are you doing here?" I mean, that because it means something. Yeah. I mean, you're you, you've yeah. when you've raced at Cedar Lake, there's 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 a nostalgia to it. There's a I mean, the top guys in the country come here and they, they're they they're impressed yeah. with it. And the speed, when I got my Shaw car, they came up from Batesville, Shaw's did, and they walked into the track. And we had been telling them like, this place is fast. You guys need to build us a stronger car through the center of the okay. car. And they, they, they came up there and they, they walked over in our pit area and they're like, holy, <laughs> you guys are not kidding. 
<laughs> this is unbelievable. And they're next door to Batesville to, to one of the biggest tracks also in the country. Yeah. And they, they came up and they said, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. So we, we, I mean, we've always known we're at, we're at quite a place. Yeah. When you go to Cedar, Cedar Lake, you are at a, you're at one of the places in the country that, you know, there's a lot of reputation there. There's a lot of pressure there when you pull in. Yeah. My dad used to tell me he could be sleeping in the truck and tell you when he was two miles from the track. <laughs> you know, they, he, he said, he, he goes, I'd wake up and I'd know right where I was because he says I could already feel the pressure of going there compared to other places, so. What, uh, so this year, plan to run the Midwest Mod? Yeah, like Speedway, obviously you're going through some treatment stuff. Yep. Everything looking fairly good there. I mean, you I'm, drove all last year during I, treatment. I did, completely sick. I, if it wasn't for my guys, I can tell you, my wife, and my daughter and my two guys. Uh, I mean, they're. I was sick. I was getting treatments on Fridays, um, and I would lay on the couch and shake all night long in a ball. And it's not been fun, man. I, I it sucks. It's a downer. I mean, even for something like this, I almost hate to talk about it because this is such a cool deal, and I, I feel, I'm honored to be here. But, but it, it, it is. It shows every, your determination. Every every, every week, every yeah. every week, and Jimmy would literally call me. There was nights I was driving to the track and I would literally say, Lord, what am I doing? Why am I why am I doing this? I, I mean I felt like crap. I, I I I would get to the track and literally just walk in the trailer and sit down and those guys would be like, Don't worry about it. Just when you can get in the car, get in the car yeah. and race and, and uh but every night it helped me. Every night after the races I'd be standing there with a smile on my face and once in a while Jimmy called me when I get home and he'd be like, You get home all right? Yep. He's like Dude, you had a smile on your face the whole rest of the night. He's like, you did, you did a good job. And 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 it got me through the whole entire season. Uh, and then I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I, I tell you, it's the, it is the thing I love. I love racing and I don't, I'll never regret it. My dad's always like, oh, I regret because I didn't do this and I didn't do that and I did racing. And, Man, I'll, I've met the coolest people. I've, it's, I mean, it's been, it's, the, the sport is incredible. I've, I've moved around a little bit and, and traveled around with like Dan Wheeler. I drove yeah. for him when he had his bypass and, and uh, drove all over the country. And you just meet the most amazing people. So it inspires me. Yeah. I get to the track and I'll tell you what, you want to do good, <laughs> you want to be good. And, and I, every night it was amazing. I, we totaled the, my first modified I've ever totaled out yeah. trying to win. And I think I had the car to win and I was being patient and following because I lost three races this last year where I got passed on the green white checkered at Jesus. the end of the race. And I lost three of them. And I, I, I was telling John, I'm like, I'm not passing until the end of the race anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'll follow until the last, and, and then I'll be the guy that passes. So I'm following Jason Schill, one of my best friends, and and, uh, and I ended up getting pounded in the wall. Oh. Wide open, backwards, sideways, airborne, driver's side into the wall, bet my car to you, first mod I've ever wrecked in 21 years of racing. And uh, so then we had to pull out an old <laughs> old car. And, yeah. But we'll, we'll be back this year. For sure, this old car, but like you know, by Ashland, yeah. we were we had six races in, it was going, and we were laughing because it was a car that Trent Fulmer used to race, okay. and he won some races with it as an A mod. Mm -hmm. And John has always loved this car; it's just been sitting in the barn. I drove it about four times, and a few years back, and we just left it sitting there. And then John finally sold the A mod motor out of it, and so it's just been sitting there. And me and Jimmy keep going. Let's put another motor in it and have two cars, and yeah. we'll have a backup. Uh, we ended up needing Need it, it so, right away, you know, or towards the end of the season. Yep. Obviously, talking about true guys, car owner, you obviously got sponsors that help all of you guys to get to the track. Yep, John is John and his wife are kind of the driving force. I, Andy Jones and the Jones family has been doing my graphics forever, mm -hmm. and they've been behind me. They've always made sure I had stuff on the car. So I mean I gotta thank Andy. He's yeah. doing last minute this last <laughs> weekend. He got me he got me stuff. He's just and he just had carpal tunnel surgery and Jesus. I called him and he's like, I'll get you stuff, just come up here and get it. And he lives close to John, so that worked out. And then John's got uh, John's got EER, Evenson Enterprise Racing, and then his wife and him run a retirement for people with like dementia mm -hmm. in their right out of their home. Oh, wow. So they can have up to five people in their home and that's kinda she they pay the they foot the bill, and they, and, and that's, we don't have we don't have any. We have the dugout, 
is is uh, is uh, they've been helping us out, and they, they give us a lot of parts. A couple of years ago, when they got uh, Todd Rogers, his daughter got out. Okay, Natalie, and uh, he had tons of stuff sitting around, so he kind of just told me to come out and clean all this stuff out. And so we nice. did tie bunch tires and rims and parts and power steering pumps and stuff, and we just took it all and parted it all out and used a bunch of it and uh, sold some of it, and then. Uh, um, well, Andy, Dave Kane, Dave Kane. I yeah. mean, I've known him forever, and you know, we raced against each other yeah. a lot. So that's not always been we're like over best friends. Yeah. But Dave has helped me a lot over the years. Tire work. Uh, oh gosh, <laughs> Dan. Yeah, of course, Dan. I mean, Dan. Dan literally in 2016 when he had his heart attack revived my career. Mm -hmm. Literally, I was struggling. I had an A mod and a B mod. And I was doing it by myself at that point, and it was, I was worn mm -hmm. out. And uh, Dan called, Dan had his bypass, and he called me and, uh, and asked me to race for him. And yeah. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> I mean, Dan, we, that year, he was leading national points by such a large margin that it took him <laughs> six weeks of not racing before they passed him. Right, right. And, and so to get called by Dan Wheeler to drive yes. your car, my wife finally, my wife smacked me and said, do you understand that you're actually good and you're a clean racer like you've always wanted to be? Because somebody like Dan doesn't call you unless he knows you're going to take care of his equipment yeah. and you're going to get as much out of it as you can. So actually, I think it took until then until where I actually started to believe that I was actually a driver, that, mm -hmm. I, could dri that I could drive, that I, was a, that I was decent and competitive and you know, my uncles, my uncle Dave, he's always like believed in me and he's always like, you're good, you're good, you're good at this. He tried to get me to race for years and years yeah. and I was like, I can't do that. I, that's too fast and it's too much and you know, but but the, Dan Wheeler, Dan has helped me out a ton and he calls me every week. Like when I've been sick, Dan and Teresa literally conference call me together, whether they're together or, or not, they call me, get on speakerphone. Mm -hmm. And my wife would bring me home from treatment, and we'd stop to eat, and uh, and uh, Dan would call me. It was like every week, and he's and him and Teresa would sit for an hour and talk to me and just check on how I was doing, talk racing, talk whatever, encourage me, and and uh, so I can't tell you like that. That's what I mean about people in racing. Yeah, I mean it's it's amazing. Brad comes over to me. Encourages me all the time. He's like, "Dude, you're one of the best guys." And I'm always yeah. like, "Yeah, whatever, Brad. You're like one of the best guys." Yeah. I'm like, "You, you picked this back up and went right to the front with it." You know, I've won, I've won some races, but Brad. I mean, he's he's been around this for a long time, yeah. and he's obviously he's good. Anything he gets, and he's good at. So, I see. We talk about racing family. Do you have us, your your wife? Do you have any children or other family? That's yeah. I have two daughters. I have an older one, and she kind of travels the country. I don't see her that often, mm -hmm. but my my younger one has been like she's just uh, she's just turned eighteen uh, on the tenth of March, and her and Dan share the same birthday, so they call they they always seem to talk or <laughs> yell at each other over the phone, you know, happy birthday, or they <laughs> sing to each other, or whatever. So it's kind of, kind of been a thing, but. But uh, but uh, she's my my youngest has just always encouraged me to keep doing, and my wife. I'm telling you what, I I could tell stories hours about her. She don't always come, but you want to talk about a fan and a, and an encourage. I n I didn't start racing until I met her. I mean, okay. she was the. I went through a divorce probably over going to the races and hanging out with people that race, you know, because I wouldn't be home and, you know, at yeah. certain times, but it was the only thing I did. So I was with her all the time, but I ended up going through divorce. And when I met Robin, I, like she literally, I've done more since I've met her in my life. She's like, just, just encouraging and, and mm -hmm. pushed me to do like, not push me in a bad way, but just like believed in me and pushed me. And she knew I always wanted to race. I bet we weren't married for, six months and i called her and said hey i gotta tell you i, I bought a race car and i want i probably should have called you first and she goes oh you bought a race car that's awesome you've always wanted to race and i was like oh my god okay i, I, I might be in here i mean this might be really good for me you know so my, i mean my wife along the way i uh, on but my people laugh because you can call me on a wednesday and go hey want to dan would it would when i went to race for dan it was like, hey, you want to come and race my car once? We didn't finish that night. And he's like, want to go to Deer Creek tomorrow? 
want to go to and literally he i was racing two three nights a week for dan and and going over there and my wife was like go yeah. have fun like she's like let me know how you do call and every once in a while she'd come with or whatever but i mean she she has been literally her and my mom my mom was like the backbone of my racing team when it started. Yeah. My mom passed away in 2013, and that was a huge loss. But she, she was the driving force mm -hmm. to like keep me racing. She, she, I think you could hear her scream at the flag stand from the concession stand. <laughs> People would tell me, "Oh my God, your mom was going nuts," and I'd be like, "Don't tell me, don't tell me," you know. But like, like later. I appreciate that's yeah. the things you appreciate like my mom my mom would call me every night I get home from Cedar Lake my mom would call me at two o'clock in the morning make sure I got home mm -hmm. and then literally we'd sit on the phone and laugh for two hours just talking on the phone about racing about life about things and I didn't have a great relationship with my mom when I was younger mm -hmm. so like the last 10 years was like that's all my memories. That's like awesome. my mom going to the track, tightening lugs, taking care of. If she did, she did everything. Everyone, Dave Kane's aunt Sue would would do her stuff, and my mom would do my stuff. And they'd always they were good friends, and they'd always look at each other down the pit row and wanted to be you know doing this and checking air. And that was my mom, man. She did. You couldn't uh, stop her. I mean, she got sick, and she would still come to the races, and she'd be like, I can still do the tires, you know, I can still do the tires, and so I mean. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. Racing for me, it's 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 a huge, huge part of my whole life because it was part of my family, and it was what we did, and mm -hmm. and it's, it's what we've done together. And coming to Cedar Lake, I mean, that was on the weekends. Of like we're going to Cedar, and you know we're going to run as hard as we can run, yeah. and so like starting to run up front when I got in that A mod was like for me that was. That was, dream come true. For it, was, it was a dream come true for me. Yeah. Anything else you think we guys missing? If we could uh, resurrect Stillwater Motor Speedway, oh god, would you run laps? There? I would run laps there. It was literally a mile from my house. My dad. I gotta tell you, yes. my dad. My dad would run Stillwater in in Cedar Lake, and I think at one point in time, the both tracks ran on ran on the same day for a while. And so my dad would literally, there was one year when my dad would run run Cedar and then drive to, Cedar, to Stillwater and get there. His guys would take off with the car. He would go get the pay and he would hoof and they'd get it unloaded. We'd pull into Stillwater and my dad would literally jump into the car in time for his race. And the one year he won 12 features at one of the tracks and 13 at the other. And the only one he lost was he broke an axle. And after that, he never left the axles in the car. From week to week, he would go to the, he would go get axles, and he would change those axles out so it would never happen again. And uh, we, so there'd be, I can tell you stories about that. We, we would literally, he'd drive the car down the road. We lived a mile down the road from Cedar Lake, and he'd drive the car behind the hauler sometimes because yeah. he'd be working on it to the last minute. And it's funny because everybody that was anybody would stop at our house on the way because it was on the road. So you'd look out the end of our, I'd, get, I'd come out, walk out of the house, and it would literally be Ron Jones, uh, Lipinski's. Uh, I mean, everybody you can think of in nostalgic in racing would be parked in our front yard right. and down in the ditch and in our field next to our house and and uh, the the memories. I mean, I could I I could literally do this for hours and bore you bore you guys to pieces. No, but I mean, stories. My, my, I mean, the the yeah. I'd go to still if I could go to Stillwater Speedway and run laps around that little track. I would do that. I used to go ride my bike over there after it was closed and ride around that track and ride my dirt bike. And we had dirt bikes. We all rode around together, Brad and all of us. We all yeah. rode dirt bikes and we'd meet over and yeah. So I was that on the south side of Stillwater or like north side? Like we're in direction if, like if you, the river. If you come down 36 heading for the river. You take a right on Oak Green. Okay. Greeley was on one side that headed to the hospital, Lakeview, and and uh, if you took a right, it was literally, it's probably a mile from like where the Washington County Fair is. Okay. It's like about a mile from there, and it and it was before you got to the end of Oak Green turned into Northbrook at the one end, and uh, it was it was just up a hill and. You'd drive up that hill, and all of a sudden you, there'd be a racetrack, and there was nothing around it, and. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a cool little bowl with just 
like wood slats are on the outside of it and I mean they they hauled her on there I watched a lady go off my mom and her were running the what do you call it, powder puff. puff and a lady went off the end of the track out into the woods and they couldn't find her forever <laughs> and when they found her she was sitting next to the car crying because my mom passed her on the last lap and won the powder puff race. And but they, my like one of my uncle, my uncle Paul, I think was actually the first person to finally find. But I can remember everyone running across the track, and it took forever. I was in the stands as a little kid, and you're leaning through, looking at the fence, and this lady just disappears <laughs> off the end of the track into the woods, like oh, up through the trees. I mean, I was like crazy, but I mean, I watched, watched a lot of stuff. Bobby Houston started on fire there, and no one thought he got out of the car, and here he jumped on the, out of the car halfway down the straightaway. Oh. Nobody saw him. He ended up having to push the race car into the pond to get it to, you know, to, to get the fire out. And, yeah. I mean, the stuff I watched there. My dad took the, there was a midget, I guess you'd call him, Donnie Nelson. Little person. Little person. He was the welder. Little person. Yes. <laughs> awesome guy. He jumped on the back of my dad's car to ride across to the flag stand and my dad didn't know he was on there and he hot lapped with him hanging. <laughs> no, no lot. And I watched it happen. It was unbelievable. My dad's like, I didn't even know he was there. He said I could hear this scream. He goes and I had no clue. And he said he just took off. And he said Here's Donnie hanging on to my dad's roll cage. And at the time, my dad had a convertible car. He didn't have a roof on the car. And Donnie is hanging on the cage and did full lap with Donnie hanging on the on the back of the car. That, that was the in the days when they'd run out on the track and flag out on the track. And then they'd run back to the infield and get on a little mound of dirt and stand yeah. there. Worth yeah. the price of admission on that. Um, amazing. Oh, I mean, the stories are amazing. Yeah, amazing stories. I think that's why I just love it. I love, I could think back and look through notebooks and my dad's got a lot of memorabilia that's just amazing about Cedar Lake, about, you know. There was a 50th anniversary book that came out and my dad and I were both in it and that to me was, yeah, that's, that was it for me, man. When I was a little kid, that's, it's all I ever wanted to do and Took me to 35 to do it, but now I'm having a hard time quitting. I'm yeah. 56, I have cancer, and I'm telling you what, all I'm thinking about is opening a racing. I got a surgery on Monday, and uh, all we talk about is getting to the racetrack for opener. I mean, that's, for me, that's mm -hmm. it's a big deal. It's, it, and I just love the people there. We stay every night mm -hmm. and just sit, and I'll sign, and I'll, Put kids in the race car every night. Brent Larson always teased me, parked right next to me for years, and he always teased me. He's like, Scotty, he's like, I could win two features in a night with the mod and the late model. <laughs> and he goes, and you'd have the, your whole car has been surrounded. And, and I'm like, well, Brent, I said, this this kind of everything to me. I said, I, you know, and I love the kids, like Brad does with the kids. Yeah. It's important, man. You got to get the kids involved. I talk to people all the time, and my guys, my guys tell me. Sometimes I feel like I'm not paying attention to everybody, but like when the kids walk up, that's what's important to me. I put them in the car, I sign autographs, I put a light in there, I take, let their parents take pictures with them. Yeah. And, and, and John always, my owner, he's always like, I love that. Yeah. He's like, because that's what it's about. you yeah. know. And, and it is passing this sport on to the kids coming up. And it's hard, you watch nowadays and you see a lot of kids just video gaming and everything else. And, and uh, boy, if you can find a kid that's, I watched my car for years, my whole racing career, I watched it out in the street. Yeah. And the kids would walk by on their phones and go like this and walk by. When I was a kid, if it had an engine on it and you heard it, you were running blocks to see what it was, you know? So nowadays when you get those kids to the track, yeah. Spend time with them, talk to them, do what Brad does, get them in quarter midgets and help them out and, and spend the time with them because that's what's going to build our racing in the future and that's what I want to see happen. I mean, I want to see, I want to yes. see that it move forward. Racing's huge, so. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for, for having around. me. I, I love this. I'm honored, totally honored just to be here. So.